Yep, we have some new IMAX. Some new IMAX got released today, like pretty much out of the blue. Um, yeah, you can probably tell from my face how excited I am. Really excited, obviously. Amazing updates and releases, but yeah, regardless, here are not 5, not 10, not 15, but 20 things you didn't know about these new IMAX and some stuff that, you know, you should know before getting one. Also, guys, the Samsung Galaxy Buds giveaway is still going, so if you want to enter, uh, just make sure you're a subscriber of the channel and also follow on Instagram as an tech, and then leave a comment on this post, the one uh, with the Samsung Galaxy S10 Plus and the S10e, saying why would you want to win the Samsung Galaxy Buds, and I'll be announcing the winners on uh, April the 1st. Not a joke, that's, yeah, we, we should have chosen a different day. Uh, I'll be doing the yeah, I mean, the winners. But yeah, that's pretty much it for now. Enjoy the video. Okay, so at number one, I'm really disappointed to say that there's no changes, no design changes at all. And there's been so many rumors from even Michiko himself saying that Apple was working on a really big display upgrade for the iMacs. Not an external monitor, for, but literally the iMacs themselves. This would have also come with a complete redesign, since the current generation iMacs, even the 2019 ones, have the exact same design as the 2019 iMacs. From the front at least, they look literally the same. I mean, yes, they did get thinner in 2012, and then they got a 5K display in 2014, but other than that, the front remained identical in 10 years. And even the iMac Pro has literally the same design, the only difference is that it comes in space grey. Aside from this, the exact same design over the past 10 years. The second thing that you should know, aside from the fact that, you know, the design is 10 years old, is the fact that the RAM is still upgradable. So that's that's quite cool. You can still open up the door from the back and, you know, upgrade the RAM yourself if you want to do that, which is great. This is even easier than upgrading the RAM on the Mac Mini. So, yeah. That's awesome. And speaking of RAM, the iMac Pro actually got a new RAM option. So you can upgrade this uh, directly from Apple. You cannot replace the RAM on the iMac Pro yourself. So you need to configure it that way. But there's a new configuration for up to 256 gigabytes of RAM. This is also ECC memory. And guess how much that costs? $5,200. But something that I was really surprised to see in these new iMacs, the 2019 ones, is that they do not come with the Apple T2 chip. Now, in case you don't know what a T2 chip is, it's a coprocessor that handles the disk encryption, the boot sequence, the microphones, the camera, uh, and so, so much more. And it basically lifts up a lot of the load from the main CPU. The iMac Pro that was released in late 2017 was actually the first Mac to have the T2 processor the 2018 Mac Mini, the 2018 MacBook Pro, 13-inch and 15-inch, and also the new MacBook Air, all of those came with the T2 processor. So literally the only ones left without a T2 were the 12-inch MacBook and the iMacs because both of those haven't been updated since 2017. But the iMac 2019, like I said, it does not come with a T2 processor, which is a really odd one. Uh, it's it's actually a good thing in, in some cases because you won't be getting the T2 crashes. I've been getting so many crashes with every single uh, Mac with a T2 processor that I've had. Lots of crashes, my 2018 MacBook Pro 15 inch is pretty much a nightmare because of that. And obviously when paying that much for a computer, like 4,000 pounds, that's crazy and this is basically unacceptable. Having crashes almost daily, by the way, with a T2 processor is just something that shouldn't be happening. So you know, at least you won't have this issue with the 2019 iMacs. Um, however, it's also a bad thing because this shows that Apple avoided a full motherboard redesign, you know, just to keep the uh, production costs low and the profit margins high. And even though this is not 100% confirmed as of yet, from the looks of everything that we've seen today, it seems like the thermal system and the internals of the iMac didn't get a major redesign like they did with the iMac Pro. Now, probably the biggest upgrade in terms of these new 2019 iMacs is actually the processor. So on the previous models, we had a quad core chip, i7. Uh, this one can go up to eight cores. Yes, you can configure the 27 inch iMac to an eight core processor, which is an i9 ninth generation processor on the 27 inch model, also up to five gigahertz. So this is actually more powerful than the eight core Xeon chip that's inside the iMac Pro. So that's a pretty massive upgrade from the previous generation. However, it will throttle. Every single Mac, aside from the, the Mac Pro doesn't really throttle that much, but every single Mac throttles, uh, even the iMac Pro, like I said, that one throttles as well. And without the completely redesigned cooling system, like we got on the iMac Pro, the CPU would almost never reach the advertised 5 gigahertz clock speeds. However, did you guys know that only the maxed out i9 configuration of the 27 inch iMac gets the 9th generation Intel processors? Because the rest of them, the rest of the 2019 iMacs, they only get Intel's 8th generation processors which were released actually in 2017. They just got updated, but they're still outdated. Now, a pretty big red flag for me when taking a look at these new iMacs 
was the external display that these iMacs support. So on the 2019 iMacs, uh, you can have one 5K display, external display, or two 4K displays, right? On the 2018 Mac Mini, you can have one 5K display or even three 4K displays. By the way, that's on the integrated GPU. Keep in mind that the iMacs come with the Vega 48, which I'll talk about in a second, but the Mac Mini with the integrated GPU can support three 4K displays versus two. Then the 2018 15-inch MacBook Pro can support two 5K displays or four 4K displays. And then the iMac Pro 2017 can do uh, two 5K displays uh, or four 4K displays. So yeah, the iMac 2019 has weaker external display support than both the Mac Mini and the 15-inch MacBook Pro. Even though performance-wise, the new 2019 iMacs are significantly more powerful than both. Okay, so why is that? Well, I actually believe that the reason for that is Thunderbolt. Thunderbolt 3, the fact that these new iMacs still come with not four, but just two Thunderbolt 3 ports. Again, the Mac Mini has four Thunderbolt 3 ports, the MacBook Pros have four Thunderbolt 3 ports, the iMac Pro has four, the MacBook Air, for example, also has two, just like the iMac 2019. And having just two Thunderbolt 3 ports is a huge, huge downside. At least for me it is, because, you know, you would use one port for connecting to a monitor, and you use the second one to connect to, let's say, some storage or a NAS, but that's it, you cannot use a second monitor, uh, you cannot use, you know, more than just one attached storage if you want to use Thunderbolt. Uh, so yeah, it's a huge downside. Obviously, you can buy a Thunderbolt 3 dock, there's a lot of those, but they're expensive and, you know, they would just clutter up your system. And something else that's missing from the 2019 iMacs is 10 gig Ethernet. So, you know, it's not a big of a deal for most people, but if you want to do some server work, if you want to connect to a NAS via 10 gig Ethernet, then that might be a problem for you. On the iMac Pro, you get one by default. On the Mac Mini 2018, you can get one when you configure your Mac Mini, but with the 2019 iMac, you don't even get that option when you configure one. Now, you can buy a Thunderbolt to 10 gigabit Ethernet adapter if you want to do that. Uh, again, it's really expensive, and two, it would basically kill, kill off one of the only two Thunderbolt 3 ports that you have. But something that's still there is the SD card slots. That one, that one's still there. The iMac Pro has one as well, but aside from those two, there's no other recent Mac that has it. So yeah, if you're into photography and video editing, this could be a pretty big deal for you. Obviously, again, you can buy adapters for, you know, a USB port, but that would basically kill off one of those four USB ports. So it's really nice having one built in. And speaking of those four USB ports, like I said, you get, you know, four of them, but they're actually USB 3.1 Gen 2. Uh, which is up to 10 gigabits per second. So that's pretty awesome to have. It's basically the same speed as Thunderbolt 1. Now, speaking of speed, Apple is killing off Fusion Drive support, kind of, and hard drive support. For example, the APFS file system is optimized and even designed with flash storage in mind and not hard drives. However, the 2019 iMacs come by default with a Fusion Drive. Now, Fusion Drives do have a small flash module in them. However, you only get 32 gigabytes of flash storage on the one terabyte Fusion Drive and uh, 128 gigabytes on the two terabyte and three terabyte Fusion Drives models. But yeah, realistically, if you want the best performance, avoid Fusion Drives. Uh, obviously, that flash storage is really small and it would uh, fill up really quickly. So just get the flash storage option full flash storage, one terabyte or two terabyte, even though that's more expensive, trust me, it's worth it in the long run. Now, you know how ming -Chi Kuo and a lot of other sources said that the iMac would be getting some big display upgrades this year, reason why we even made 2019 redesign iMac concept. Well, some of you might've seen that. Um, the display is basically the same. So there's no display upgrades. It's still a 5K display, 500 nits brightness, 12,000, 1200 to one constant ratio, which is pretty good. And it's still a 10 bit panel. It, you know, it's 10 bit through dithering. So it's not, you know, actual 10 bits, but it can produce over 1 billion colors. Okay, so the design is the same. The CPU got an upgrade. So what about the GPU? Well, we actually have some new models of GPUs. We have the 580X, which is a slightly higher clocked version of the 580, which is what we got in the 2017 iMacs. However, there's also a brand new GPU option, the Vega 48, which according to Apple is 50% better uh, than the 580 from the 2017 iMacs. And on the new iMac Pros, we also have another option, the Vega 64X, which same as the 580X is an overclocked version of the Vega 64. Now, something interesting worth pointing out is that these new iMacs did not get Bluetooth 5.0 like pretty much every single new Apple device, which is interesting. Even the new iPads and the new iPhones, everything got Bluetooth 5.0 except 
for the new iMac and also the MacBook Air. But realistically, on the iMac, it's not a big of a deal because it's a desktop, so you don't really care about range and you know traveling and distance. And speaking of the same, the speakers on the iMac Pro are way better, by the way. So no, the speakers have not been redesigned like the ones on the iMac Pro. So if you if you care about sound quality, the iMac one is already pretty good. The iMac speakers, uh, but on the iMac Pro, you can even do video editing, even audio editing straight from those speakers. And fun fact, guys, if you max out the iMac Pro now. It's gonna cost you fifteen thousand seven hundred dollars or fourteen thousand pounds six hundred and seventy eight. So, yeah, that's almost half the cost of a Tesla Model Three. I'll just let that sink in a bit. And finally, if you get a baseline iMac Pro, that one costs five thousand dollars or forty nine hundred pounds, and it comes with an eight core Intel Xeon processor, thirty two gigabytes of ECC memory, the Vega fifty six GPU, and one terabyte of storage. Now, if you configure the iMac twenty nineteen in a similar way with an eight core processor, the i nine CPU, which is by the way up to five gigahertz compared to four point two gigahertz, so the CPU is actually better on the iMac twenty nineteen. Uh, thirty two gigabytes of DDR four memory, Vega forty eight, which this one is actually a bit weaker than the Vega 56 and the same one terabyte of flash storage, it's gonna cost you $42.50 or 4,000 pounds. So the iMac Pro is $750 more, but you do get a better GPU. You get four versus two Thunderbolt 3 ports. Uh, you also get 10 gigabit ethernet. You get a better cooling system, better speakers, ECC memory, and it comes in space gray. Yeah, let me know in the comments what do you guys think about these new 2019 iMacs and the, the new, kind of the new upgraded iMac Pro. Uh, definitely don't forget about the Samsung Galaxy Buds giveaway. Like I said, that's still going. Just be a subscriber to the channel, follow on Instagram for more cool content as well as enough tech and leave a comment on this post with the Galaxy S10 and the S10e saying why would you want to win a pair of Galaxy Buds? And I'll be announcing the winners on Instagram by the M and story uh, on April the 1st. Not a joke. Subscribe on notifications for more cool content and more in-depth videos like this one was, hopefully. Uh, also check out the previous 2019 iPads, 30 things you didn't know video, really similar to this one, but on the iPads and you know more things. But yeah, this has been pretty much it. Thank you for watching. Really looking forward to that Mac Pro update in 2019. Overall, I'm, I'm disappointed to be honest in the 2019 iMacs. So I really hope that Apple, I was hoping for Apple to, you know, completely redesign it, uh, similar to the concept that we made, but it seems like that's not happening, you know, this year, hopefully in 2020. Uh, but yeah, this has been pretty much it. Thank you for watching. I'm Daniel. I'll see you guys in the next video. Zenoptech, signing out. Cheers.